This NDE occurred on September 2, 2020 at the age of 53. My first NDE occurred when I was four years old near drowning with little detail, but with knowledge of God's existence, which has led to me being a lifelong seeker of truth. My NDE. I awoke at 5 a.m. with the full moon shining through the slats of my room's blinds. I got out of bed, opened the blinds, and gazed at the moon before returning to bed and falling asleep. A few small pastel-colored balls of light floated into the scene while I was dreaming some ordinary dream. The dream was brightened by another type of light that the orbs seemed to emit, a soft white light that faded everything in my dream into the background. I then decided to go with these orbs without hesitation. I found myself in space, just above the atmosphere. I was completely conscious and thought, it's happening, implying that I had died. I was filled with awe and excitement. I didn't think about my body or anything or anyone I cared about on this planet. During my experience, there was complete detachment or no recollection of my earthly life, which I found odd but not distressing after I returned. I don't think it meant that my life or the people I'd care about here weren't important to me. It was more about being present in order to limit distraction. It felt completely natural to be so present without any concern or burden. I looked to the right after I had the thought that I had died and saw many white wisps floating up into space from the earth at different intervals, and I knew they were souls of people who had just died as well. Then I had this overwhelming desire to be with Jesus. The intensity of that feeling surprised me because, while I had been drawn to and loved Jesus on earth, the desire to see him in spirit was all-consuming. I shot up with incredible speed, but then I wanted to see the earth below, so I slowed until I just hovered there in awe, gazing at all the stars around me. I also had the impression that there wasn't enough time to look at the earth, but that thought seemed to come from outside of myself, from other beings I couldn't see. I thought about the earth again, and suddenly I was floating above a building, but I didn't know where. When I considered touching it, an opaque form of my hand appeared, and when I touched it, my hand felt its density, but passed right through it. It was bizarre. So I flew through the wall faster and didn't feel a thing. I became aware that I was in a nursing home. I moved along the ceiling and through the walls until I arrived in a room with two very old women with dementia in their beds awake and in some kind of mental distress. As I got closer to them, I noticed a soft, green glow emanating from me. When the first woman looked up and began smiling joyfully in my direction, I realized she could see me. My light touched her, and she babbled back at me, but she was so happy. The other woman next to her reacted in the same way, and when I considered healingly touching her cheek with my hand, my hand appeared with a green glow, and I felt her face. Because my hand wasn't solid, she cupped hers over mine, and it just merged into mine. And, based on her joyful reaction, she appeared to feel it as well. I'm a nurse on this earthly plane and I've cared for many people with memory issues, so helping in spirit felt natural to me albeit in a different way. It was just more satisfying and joyful right away because the heaviness of my human body and mind was gone. All that came out of me was love, and I received it in return. I looked up through the ceiling into the night sky, and then I remembered the ocean. I adore the ocean as a human being. When I looked down, the waves were breaking on a partially frozen shore. I considered just jumping in, but it appeared to be quite cold. So I just skimmed the surface of the water with my hand, and it wasn't cold, just cool. I remember thinking it was strange that I was concerned about the water's temperature. It was a very human thought. When I was flying around in space, I had no such thoughts. It was as natural to me as breathing. Then Jesus came to mind again, and I shot up into space among the stars until I reached a certain distance before stopping and drifting back down near Earth. This happened to me a few times, not because something or someone stopped me, but because I was simply enthralled by all the wonders around me. I felt like a kid for the first time at Disney and multiplied by a thousand. If you're wondering why I didn't describe what I saw in detail, it's simply not possible. Awe is an indescribable emotion. I was thinking about Jesus again and I could only go so far in space before I had to stop. But this time I felt as if a force was stopping me from going any further or even calling out his name. Perhaps I wouldn't have been able to return if I had been allowed. I recall being dissatisfied while floating in space and asking myself, where is Jesus? Just as I was wondering why I couldn't see him, I noticed a light across the darkness of space that wasn't like the light of the stars. This light was familiar to me. I did not approach the light. The light grew closer to me and grew larger. With its pink and billowing dark smoky grays, it undulated like a white glowing ember enfolded in a nebula. The light came to a halt before engulfing me, and for a few moments I was in touch with the essence of the light, 
which was complete love. And we were one in those moments. This was not the Jesus I had expected to see, but I didn't question it. Instead, I simply accepted it. Love is simply a word we use to describe the experience that love is. The light didn't say anything because there are no words to label or describe its being. When the light went out, I heard a single male voice start singing the first few lines of a song at Capella as if I had ears. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the melody and words were familiar. The song continues, but those were the only words I could hear. The verse from Isaiah 6 9 refers to Jesus as the Prince of Peace. As that voice faded, I felt like I floated back into my body like a feather and my eyes opened. The sun had just risen. Then I realized I wasn't dead. I had no idea I would return to my body at the end of this very religious experience that didn't seem religious at all while I was in it. The thing is, regardless of how spiritually amazing that experience was, I was relieved to be back on earth. I was simply stunned and in awe. I accept that my spiritual identity has only been partially revealed to me. As a human, I don't believe I can truly comprehend the majesty and magnitude of the soul in God. I know what I need to know, and the rest is a matter of faith. I believe in the divine purpose of faith, my side effects, and increased awareness that my time on earth is finite. That I have a purpose waiting for me on the other side, but I must wait for the call to go home. So while I'm here, I should take advantage of loving myself and others unconditionally, because this is difficult to do in human form. But doing so is healing not only for me but for others as well. What's difficult is remembering what it's like to be soul without the constraints of a body, and then returning to a world where so many others, including myself, are caught up in fear to some degree. Knowing what it's like to be completely free of fear and worldliness, and then returning to be subject to it personally again, as well as witnessing others go through it, feels even more oppressive. But there is no way out, only transcendence. I've become more sensitive to pain and grief for myself and humanity, which has resulted in even more compassion and love, including forgiveness. My spiritual eyes have been opened to see through illusions within myself, others, society, and systems to see the painful truth of how we manipulate and harm ourselves and others out of fear. And that fear must be recognized and acknowledged. And the destructive things we've done, as well as the consequences of those actions, must be laid bare in front of us so that we can feel the pain, grieve, and then show ourselves compassion and unconditional love then we can truly show compassion and love to others. This is how love overcomes fear. It's an acceptance, an integration driven by pure love, a return to completeness. This knowledge, I believe, is a result of my experience and one that I've put into practice. It's not simple. It's deep, divine, and at times heartbreaking work. But like childbirth, the reward is enormous. Thank you.